Brian. Good afternoon, everybody. Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. NVIDIA earnings after the bell tonight. Right now, we have markets in negative territory. We have the S&Ps right now, negative by about 30 points, half a percent in the red at 59.09. NASDAQ 100, we're about 160 points in the red, off about 8 tenths percent, 20,606. Dow. Barely in the red by about one tenth percent or 61 points, 43,338. And the Russell off by about half a percent at 23.22. Let's jump right into it. NVIDIA earnings after the bell. You're trading right now down about 1.9 percent. Talked about it during the three o'clock update. And you're talking about a price point of about $163, puts it at a $4 trillion valuation. Now, with that said, right now, we're at about a $3.4 trillion valuation. And you better believe that the bar is pretty high to live up to expectations when you talk about running from $10 to 144 We're above where we were in June. That high was 14076 right now. As you can see, the volume trailing off a bit, right? Just take a look at this thing on a weekly basis the number of volumes as this was accelerating higher but since that june high we've seen a little bit of a trail off as we've continued to make new highs expectations just through the roof we'll see what they have to say about blackwell news out earlier in the week that blackwell they were having some problems with overheating working on redesigning how they're putting those chips in the server racks as they push them out a little bit late in the game that was a little bit worrisome for nvidia shares Trying to find, yeah, that was Monday morning that that news comes out. You see the reaction. We were at about 142. You drive down to 137. The market says, no, we're not worried about that. NVIDIA actually above where we opened the week, trading at 144.38. And as I mentioned, about a $12 move priced in in either direction for options. It's a big move, but as we know, this equity can move in big ways on earnings. So we find out after the bell, and that's going to affect many companies out there. The NASDAQ 100, AI. Uh, the likes. We jump over to MetaShares right now. Flat, trading at 561. Tesla, down by 1.7%. They've been on quite a run recently. And let's get into the other story of the day. Target shares, watch out below, folks. 21% to the downside. Target shares, you put this thing on a daily, you're well below the lows of August. And you put it on a weekly to find where this thing is going. Very real chance that it comes down to test the $100 area. The lows of last year, October of 2023, 102.93. Target share is down by 21%. And it was a little bit of a, I don't call it a perfect storm, but yeah, they had some problems across the front. They ordered too many goods. They were worried about the port strike. They stocked up on goods. They've got a extra supply. It cost them more than they thought it was going to to store those goods. And then comp sales have not been kind to them. Yeah. Comp sales. This is an interesting one. Blue is Walmart. Red is Target. Rightfully so. And you can see that, yes, okay, there is correlation in terms of comp sales change from a year earlier. But look at the divergence recently and look at the fact that Target, so much of that decline actually in the red versus Walmart declined, but their comp sales have always been rising. Now, comp sales, okay, rose 0.3% as of November 2nd. The market was looking, yeah, for 1.5%. Now, I was reading an article earlier this morning. Online sales, comp sales, growing at 11 to 12%, decent numbers. But they got a problem. They got a problem with too much inventory yet again. And on the outlook, that's going to hit their profitability. You're talking about adjusted earnings, 830 to 9, excuse me, 830 to 890 a share. The market was looking for 9970. Now the bigger relationship here is, and that's why I love that chart of Walmart versus Target. You can't overstate what's going on in these equities. Now check out this chart of Walmart, okay? This thing is approaching, and this isn't the holy grail, but man, you look at technical formations, okay? And you're about to do a one to 1.618. That's how big this move has been since May of 2022. Walmart goes from 18 bucks to 50 over the years of 2015 to 2020 you pull back briefly and now we're about to do a 1.618 1, 1. expansion it's a big move across the board point being target is losing huge market share to walmart and you know the changes that have occurred 
And I love Target. I talked about it. I was in Target yesterday, folks. All right, with Tommy. We're hanging out. It's a fun experience, but I'm, I'm not shopping for my essentials in there. That's for sure. Okay? We have become hyper-aware as price consumers to a certain degree, right? Uh, the haves, the have-not society, luxury performances, William Sonoma rocking. We're going to get to that one later in the program as well, okay? Um, there it is. William Sonoma up by 27%, okay? Yeah. People, though, are not going in the middle right now, and that's a problem for Target, as in they're going to Walmart to save money, or if they have the ability and they're well enough economically, they're going to the high end of the spectrum, and they can make these, those purchases as well, the likes of William Sonoma. But where does Tiger? Oh, you know what? That's how 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 about that for Big Brother spying? I got an uh, I got a Alexa stop. I got an Alexa in the house for Tommy, and uh, it's talking to me, thinking I'm I'm asking about William Sonoma. Got to remember to turn that one off. Nonetheless, Target, where do they fall on that? They're not the cheapest, and they're not a premium brand. They're in the middle, and those middle areas are tough right now. And you're seeing it as Walmart continues to grow. Target has stocked up, and now they have an inventory problem, and it's going to hit profitability, and you're back to 122. And as I said, there's nothing in the way of this thing going to 100. Long term, they have a great brand, okay? Target, Target, they have a great brand. Technically, though, there's nothing preventing this from going down and testing these lows. You know, you have that low from November, almost two years ago to the day. Uh, excuse me, a year ago. November 23rd, the week of, excuse me, November 13th, the week of, 107.13 is that bar where we extend to. You had volume of 62 million shares almost, but check it out. Look what we're doing today, this week, already. 70 million shares. It's a mammoth move, and we're probably coming to test those lows. If NVIDIA saves the market today, we'll see, as everything will get a little bit of a lift, but target share is down by 21% right now. You jump over to Walmart. Walmart, barely in the positive. Coal shares getting hit in the same regard, down by 3.8%. Watch out for that chart of Kohl's, 1636 for coal shares. All right, folks, S&P's off by 28, as I mentioned, NVIDIA after the bell, but we got a treat coming back after the break. We got our man, Sean Edwards from Direction, Vice President, Institutional ETF Strategist. We're gonna talk a little bit of NVIDIA. We're gonna talk a little bit of technology stocks, ETFs, semiconductors, and we'll even talk a little bit of China. We'll get into it. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with Sean. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading.